Hello. I got an email from a student wanting me to set up AC analysis and the dot trans analysis in LT Spice. So, what I'm doing is I'm going to record my desktop and we want to build a circuit really quick. And again, as a review, components. We want the general voltage source and we'll make this an AC circuit just like we did in uh, DC I put in a generic component I'm going to put in a resistor I'm going to control R rotate it escape I'm going to put in an inductor escape and I'm going to put in a capacitor now escape so what I've got is a simple RLC circuit and got to have a circuit ground and you got to connect the dots so let's build it and then we will go in and analyze it Doesn't hurt to see this one more time, I hope. And there we go, series circuit. Now I'll go in and do values, and my values will change. I'm gonna have to change my voltage source when I do the uh, analysis part. For now, I just wanna do a standard AC analysis like you do in an AC class so I'm going to go to the advanced tab um, in case you missed it I'm right mouse clicking in the voltage source going to advanced tab and I'm just gonna set up my amplitude um, I find this to be a little bit of a misnomer because if you set it up as RMS instead of amplitude then when SPICE solves it, LT SPICE solves it, you'll get amplitude answers. If you set it up as RMS, you get RMS answers. So if you just go with RMS, in your mind, even though it says amplitude, it works out pretty well for getting the actual RMS answers. When we go to uh, actually build a sine wave, and we we do the dot trans analysis then we will be looking at the peak at that point so I'm gonna give it a 10 volt AC source I don't have to worry about phase I don't have to worry about anything else just that so I've got a 10 volt AC source and for resistance uh, let's do 100 ohms inductance have no idea because you put in your inductance in Henry's. So, uh, without going through the uh, equation to go from Henry's to reactants, I really don't know how much inductance I'm adding. So I'm gonna say 0.3 Henry's. Spice will do that calculation for me and for the microfarads, I'm going to do uh, 22 micro or 22 u okay alrighty so there's my circuit I hit my space bar to center it I've got to go in and do my uh, analysis so I go to simulate edit simulation command and I want to do first of all I want to do an AC analysis type of sweep we're only going to do one point um, when you're in DC or when you're in the AC class, typically you only care about one frequency. It didn't allow me to set the frequency over here, so I'm going to set it in my analysis what frequency I want analyzed. And you'll get numbers, you'll get the numbers which will show you what your meter will read at various points. Okay, so let's say I'm choosing, uh, uh, 
I'll do something other than 60. Let's say I'm choosing 150 hertz and 150 hertz. Again, I only want one point. This analysis allows me to sweep through multiple frequencies to see the difference and actually uh, plot or get the different numbers at different frequencies. So if I wanted to change this frequency and see how this circuit responded at all sorts of different frequencies, then I could go in and set up my sweep type and then I could do my number of points and I could have it sweep through my frequencies. For the purpose of AC analysis, general AC analysis on a circuit, you just need the one point. It can be linear. Start frequency and stop frequency is the same. So I'm going to click OK and put that analysis card in my circuit. And that's what it looks like. And now I can simulate it. And what you see is I get different values. It's telling me what my voltage at node 1 is, which is this is node 1. This is node 2, so I'm losing 9 tenths of a volt here. Um, I'm going from 9 tenths of a volt all the way down to 1 volt across the inductor. So I can, I can subtract my voltages. It's also given me the phase angle of the voltage, which is kind of interesting that you get the voltage value and you get the phase angle. If you measure, if you built this circuit and measured it with a voltmeter, an AC voltmeter, you would not see the angles. You would only measure these voltages. And it's interesting to note that the voltage drop... Um, across everything if you added them all up would add up to more than 10 because of the L and the C the way they the way they respond to each other for instance I've got 8 volts here across that well one let's see if we can analyze it but I get my voltage I get my current straight shot if I put an ammeter in here I'd get uh, 39 milliamps in this circuit and my current has a certain angle my voltages would have an angle so if I if I if I went in and did the voltage across these two um, you would see a difference and I think I can do that close the analysis click there and hold. Nope, it's going to move it. Okay, it's not going to do the analysis I thought it would. So if I simulate it, I just get values. They pop back up. If I want to know the voltage drop across R1, I just subtract 10 at an almost zero angle and 9.1 at a different angle voltage. I can subtract those. I'll get a number and I'll get an angle. Across the inductor, I can subtract those voltages, and there's an angle associated. And from here all the way down to zero, node three, top of the capacitor, to node zero, which is where my ground is, I would get another answer. And note, if I add 1.89 to that, well, that should add up back up to 10. But the angle will be different. So it's, so it's interesting when you do the analysis. Okay? So that's simple AC analysis. This gets you exactly what your meter reads. And a lot of times this is, this is enough to do. Alrighty. Um, that's AC analysis. I'm going to stop this video. And then I'm going to start a new one with this circuit. But then we'll do the transient analysis. Thanks for watching.